Hey everyone, in this video I am going to cover everything you need to know in order to edit your audio and music for your videos. And if you don't know me yet, my name is Nila, so lovely to meet you and on my channel I share my best filmmaking tips as well as video editing tutorials, basically everything you need to know in order to start making better videos. Now in my previous video, if you haven't seen that video, I would recommend you to check that one out because in that video I cover everything you need to know in order to edit your first videos. And this is a 13, a 1, 3, 13 minute video or crash course that will help you edit your first videos. I show how to create your first sequence as well as selecting bits and pieces from all your videos and edit it into one video and how you can add effects and transitions to make your videos look a lot better. In this video, we are going to edit the audio. We're going to explore the audio settings. We're going to find out how we can lower the music for when you're speaking, for example, how you can fade in or fade out songs, how to transition from a talking headshot to a B-roll sequence, basically all the good stuff. Before we start, let's familiarize ourselves a little bit with the workspace. And if you watched my previous video, you will recognize this workspace because in that video, we worked in the editing workspace. In this video, we will be working in the editing workspace, but we will also take a quick look at the audio workspace. If you're working in the default workspace, you're supposed to see this little meter right here on the right side of your timeline or sequence. Now this will show you the volume of the video. So if I were to scrub through this, you can see exactly how many decibel your music or your dialogue is. And by keeping an eye on this, you will make sure that your audio doesn't peak or is too low. So the other workspace that we will be working with is the audio workspace. Now the audio workspace offers a lot of different options. There's a lot you can do within this workspace. But because this video is a basic tutorial, like I said before, we're just going to use the basic things that you will need for your first videos. If we click on the audio clip mixer, and then we'll click on the sequence, we will see that there are four meters. And these meters all represent one of the audio tracks right here. So as you can see, A1 is audio one, which is this one, and then audio two, audio three, audio four. So what it means is if, for example, on audio one, you have all your dialogue or all your talking bits, on audio two, you have all your music, and on audio three, you have all your sound effects, you will see different values for every track depending on how loud they are. So depending on the volume of that track. So if I were to go through this, you can see that the audio one is way higher than the audio two because the audio two is the background music and the audio one is when I'm talking and that is when you're supposed to actually be able to understand me. And right here we have the essential sound panel where we can assign a tag to every of our clips, but we'll do that in a second. Let's first go through a few of the very basic but very important audio options. So I'm gonna go back to the editing workspace and I'm going to zoom in and as you can see this is our finished product right now but I'm going to reset everything and we're gonna do everything from scratch. So as you can see right here, we have a music track and we see this line. Now this line you can drag up or down and if you move it up, you'll see that you will increase the volume and when you move it down, you'll see that you'll lower the volume. First things first, you want your audio tracks to be organized. So you wanna have one track for the dialogue, one track or two tracks, for the music and then a track for the sound effects or as many sound effect tracks as you need. The reason why you want this is because yes, you can drag and drop everything onto the timeline, but it's going to be hard to identify. It's just going to make everything just harder. Yes, you can do it that way. I'm not gonna say no if you wanna do it that way, but from my personal experience, the few times that I didn't pay any attention and I just drag and dropped everything to the timeline, Ooh, that was a pain in the peach. So don't do that. Instead, create all of those tracks. And if you want, you can even rename those tracks. So if you close your project and in a few days or a few weeks, you have to work on that project again, you can easily see what track is what. So in order to do that, what you wanna do is you wanna go here to the track. You wanna make the track a little bit bigger and then right click on it and click on rename. Let's first select all the dialogue bits. And I do that by clicking at the beginning of the track and then holding it while moving the cursor 
over all of the clips. And as you can see now, all of the dialogue clips are selected. You can also select everything by hitting Ctrl A or Command A. But if you have more than only the dialogue bits, so for example, if you already have your music or your sound effects on the timeline, then it's going to select all of those too. And you only want the dialogue clips for this one. So that is why I say to just select it that way. But of course, just do whatever works for you. Now go to the audio workspace and click on dialogue. Now you've assigned an audio type to your clips and Premiere Pro will know that those clips are dialogue. Now go to loudness and click on auto match. This is very useful if you have audio clips that are at different levels. I always do this regardless of whether my audio has different levels because it will automatically adjust the loudness to an appropriate level for your audio type. And in this case, that is dialogue. Now that we've done that, it is time to add our sound effects and our music. And as you may know, I get all my music from Epidemic Sound. If you want to try it out for free, there's a link in my bio description if you want to check it out and you want to try it out for free. I will make a separate video where I show you how I do my sound design for bigger video projects. But for this video, we're just going to take it easy. We're going to keep it simple. We're only going to stick to the basics, everything you need to know to edit sound for your video. So I found this song that I think will work for my video. And if you want to use the entire song, all you have to do is simply drag and drop it to the timeline. However, if you want a part of the song, what you want to do is you want to double click on it so it will show up in the source monitor right here. Now go through the song and when you found a part that you want to use and you're ready to select that part, hit I on your keyboard to create your in point or the beginning point, the start point, and then go to the end of the part that you want to select and hit O on your keyboard to create your out point or end point. And now drag and drop this to the timeline. The same goes for sound effects. So if you want to use, for example, a whoosh to make your transition, the very popular whoosh, to make your transition feel more real, all you have to do is import it into your project bin and then just drag it to your timeline. And now we're going to do the same thing that we did earlier. We're going to go and open up the audio workspace select all of our music tracks and assign the audio type music. And for the sound effects, we're going to label everything as SFX. However, if you want to use this song underneath your dialogue, it's probably going to be too loud. So we're going to fix that manually. When the music starts, you may want to do three things. You may either want to abruptly stop the music or you want the music to continue playing, but you want it to fade out or you just want it to fade out because you don't want any music or you want to move on to a different track later. So if you want to abruptly stop your music, all you have to do is press C on your keyboard to enable the razor tool and then cut the music right here. If you want to either keep the music playing or let it fade out, we need to create keyframes. Click on the music track and then move the toggle head to where you want the music to start fading. Usually I choose a point right before where the dialogue starts. So it's a little bit smoother. It, you don't need to compete with the music. That, that is just how I like to do it. Now move your toggle head forward and lower the volume to a point that is acceptable for you. You want to make sure that you're easy to understand and easy to listen to when the music is still playing, but you also want to hear the music. I don't have a level that I stick to. Um, sometimes it's minus 20, sometimes it's minus 30, minus 25. It really depends. So I cannot really tell you to go and lower it to minus 20. I would recommend you to just play it and then hear whether it sounds good or not. Now we've only faded out our music and we can do the same for the beginning because sometimes in a video, what you have is you have a talking bit and then you have your B-roll and you have another talking bit. And you probably want the music to fade in as well. In order to do that, make sure to first go to the point where you want the music to be loud. So the B-roll music level, I guess you could say. And you want to create a keyframe right there because this will make sure that the level will remain constant throughout the B-roll. Now what we want to do is we want to go forward or actually backwards. We want to go to the beginning of the music and we want to create another keyframe by lowering the volume to probably the same as how you ended it, how you want it to fade out. So basically what your track will look like is a little bit like this. It will go up like this and then it will remain constant throughout the B-roll and then it will go down again. 
When it comes to sound effects, I personally still think it's too loud. My problem with a lot of videos that I watch is that the sound effects are too obvious. And maybe it's just a personal thing, maybe it's just a personal preference, but what I like is I like to use my sound effects as something that will make you experience something, but you won't hear it. You won't hear it, but your brain won't register it as a sound effect. And I've heard a lot of wishes, a lot of things that make me realize that it is a sound effect. And you kind of want the wish to be there, but you want it to be smooth and you want it to be subtle. After labeling it as sound effects, I still lower the volume. To make it subtle, it will be there, but like I said, your brain won't register it and you won't think like, oh, that's a sound effect, which is something that I personally hear all the time and I don't, I don't like it. But that is my personal opinion. You may not agree with me. You may like it to be a little bit louder or you like the volume that it's set to already. That is totally fine. But for me personally, I just like it to be subtle. So therefore I lower the volume. And again, I don't have a specific value that I use for every sound effect because some sound effects, I want them to be heard a little bit more. And for some, I want them to be a little bit more subtle. If you want to use multiple songs and you want to stitch them together, there is a very easy way of doing that. And that is by using the constant power effect. Type in constant power and then drag it where the two songs meet. And as you can see, you've created a good transition. Now, personally, I would recommend if you want to do this, I would recommend you to first find the point of the one song and then find the point of the other song where you want both the first one to end and the other one to start and then apply the effect and not just apply the effect to the end of one song and the beginning of the first song. If you want to make this song longer, because for example, your video doesn't last only three minutes, it's maybe five or seven minutes or 10 minutes, and you wanna use the same song, you can very easily do that. You don't have to chop it up and then stitch it all together and make it look good and use the concert power. You don't have to do that. You can do that very easily easily. If you want to do this, if you want to make your song as long or as short as you want, I would recommend you to check out this video where I share my top five tips on how to edit audio super fast. It is super easy. Anyone can do it. So go check it out because if you want your song to be five minutes, no problem. Do you want your song to be 10 minutes? No problem. Do you want your song to be 30 minutes? No problem.